Sound advice to keep your body and mind in perfect harmony. You're tuned in to the Dr. Stephen Show. Now, here is Dr. Steven Eisenberg. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Stephen Show. I have an amazing special guest with me today, Dr. Kien Vu, anti-aging extraordinaire, interventional radiologist, totally takes care of cancer patients, and author of the amazing new book, Thrive State. Now, I go way back with Kien, and I want to go into his origin story. I want to go deep because uh, it's an amazing story and how he has transformed not only his life, but the lives of thousands of people. And this book is a game changer. So, Kien, welcome to the Dr. Stephen Show. Steven, your energy is definitely contagious. I love, uh, I love just being you know, being able to banter with you because I love how it feels. And thank you for that warm introduction, brother. Thanks, man. Now, um, I uh, I am thrilled that you're here, and I want to I want to go way back. I want to go way yeah. back because your your story is so inspiring, so uplifting. It's 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 beautiful. It it makes me. It makes me smile. It makes me cry. It makes me quell. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> please take me back to when you were a young child coming here, um, coming here on a boat. I, I mean, take me back to your earliest memories of when you, when you made your way over, over the seas. Yeah, so, sounds good. Well, I don't remember a lot of it, though, you know, there are times in my adulthood, I, I, I wonder why some of my thought patterns are a certain way. Um, and certainly my past has, has a lot to imprint. But for those that don't know, I was actually born in Vietnam three years after the, the Vietnam War. My parents, my grandparents are Chinese in origin, uh, but they lived in Vietnam, but they were also always persecuted against uh, as, as Chinese people in Vietnam. Uh, and after the Vietnam War, the communists really sieged all the businesses. My parents did pretty well. They, they had owned a pharmacy, but they took that away. They basically seized all the worldly possessions. And, and my mom and dad were thinking, hey, this is not a place to raise a child. And so when I was only a couple of months old, um, you know, my parents tried to escape with me. So initially, we escaped on this very small boat. They were caught. And my dad actually got thrown into a re-education camp. And um, mm. while he was in prison, my mom was forced to entertain the troops by singing to them while being pregnant with me. And uh, yeah, I, well, I actually have to share that. Yeah, my mom's a singer. And so I was actually born without my dad on my side, you know, by my side. And wow. a couple months, when I was a couple months old, he was finally freed and they had tried again. They basically used all their worldly possessions and we boarded this refugee boat filled with 2000 refugees 2000 uh, we were 2000 i mean you should you should see the pictures we were packed like sardines and and uh we're gonna we were credit, actually, we're gonna put a picture up in the on the on the um podcast post yeah 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 I'll, I'll make sure you get those pictures for me but we were packed like sardines we were actually you know uh positioned right next to the restroom and i was the only infant you know that survived but people got a chance to know me because every time people had to walk over <laughs> over our family to get to the restroom, they're like, oh, wow, cute Abel, uh, oh baby. God. Yeah. Um, I had dysentery and that was the only time uh, we got to leave the boat. So I was on the boat for eight months um, eight and months. Uh, eight months on that boat because there was no room in the refugee camp. You said uh, you were the only infant to survive. Others didn't make it. That's like... No, there were adults that 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 drowned because basically when we when we got when we got to the Philippines, uh, we had to board a larger ship, and so people basically had to walk the plank from a small ship to, to a bigger ship, and you know people that that fell off, they didn't go rescue them, and then a lot of people uh, certainly just passed away from illness. Uh, you know there was a lot of dysentery on the boat, and I was actually the only baby that survived. Oh. Um, I spent another three months in a Philippine refugee camp. And then as an early Christmas present of November, 1979, a, a Catholic church sponsored us uh, to Los Angeles. And one would think that a kid who has gone through that process and, and uh, uh, survived dis 
so grateful. But you know, for me being an Asian immigrant kid, uh, and you know, let me, I also got bused to a more affluent area for school. And being that poor Asian immigrant kid being bused to sort of a rich kid school was no walk in the park. You know, so no. I was constantly being teased for for you know being Asian for for the holes in my hand me down clothes for the stinky food my mom took <laughs> took me to lunch. So I remember growing up just with feelings of well, this really sucks. You know, I yeah. you know the feelings of just not being enough, right? Not not rich enough, not tall enough, not American enough, not white enough, and um, I did a lot to compensate for that. You know, p- you know part of my, the, the reason why I have like such a voice for. <laughs> personality was yes. I remember just wanting not to, not to be my own skin. In fact, you know, before I went to that rich kid school, I, I was in a school in Chinatown, LA. And in that school, there were just immigrants from Mexico, immigrants from Asia. And I remember thinking I did not like, you know, I, I did not want to sound like I had an accent, mm. you know, so I remember giving the Pledge of Allegiance once, you know, in, in front of the entire school. And I was a I was a five-year-old kid that sounded like this. <laughs> I, told myself I was not gonna I was not gonna sound like, uh, like Pledge of Allegiance different. to the flag and uh exactly. ni- 79 and sunny in LA. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but that was it, yeah. But that was the childhood. I want to go it, back. It I want to I want to go back to the dysentery story because sure. Part of the thrive state is 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 the microbiome and having a yeah. having a, a an ironclad GI system. You started off at a disadvantage. You had dysentery. You had dysentery. Yeah. I mean, you learned about the importance of GI and digestion and everything before you could even speak. I mean, and then tell me about like when you you're before you were sent to the other school mm-hmm. what was your your earliest memories of childhood your earliest memories of childhood your father was able to join you yeah you had this feeling of of being different not good enough it's a very common story but i think it hits home even more it hits home even more uh, given your whole origin story what were your earliest memories my earliest memories were we, when we finally made it to LA, all my extended family actually lived in one apartment building. My, my grandfather became the manager of this apartment building. And within our small apartment, we shared probably like a 500 square foot apartment with myself, my mother, uh, my dad's two brothers. So we, we, we were really cramped. Then, well, I remember, um, sort of, wily little kid um there was not you know i couldn't do very much inside the apartment so i i was sort of like dennis to menace uh, in my <laughs> little neighborhood so i i was always sort of like um trying to uh start up you know some you know you know uh, uh some kind of trouble whether it be you know you know lighting up firecrackers in, in neighborhood <laughs> you know, doors and things like that um but uh yeah, at that school, so I, you were I a little boisterous a little kid. As a kid. Just, I was a boisterous little kid. In fact, I wanted to be an actor when I was a kid. I, I, I looked at the people on TV. I was like, you know what? That's really cool. I, I wanted to be able to inspire people like a Tony Robbins or make people laugh like, like a Robin Williams, just like yourself. And I remember auditioning for a few movies, too. I was actually the second runner up to... Um, for the Golden Child, you know that movie with yeah, Eddie Murphy. Yeah, and uh, I, I also, remember you telling me this. Yeah, you remember that movie. Yeah, yeah. and I also uh, auditioned for The Last Emperor, uh, which actually won 1987 uh, Best Picture. Yes, uh, but my younger brother, who had no no desire to be an actor whatsoever, actually, you know, uh, took the role of Young Puyi, and he's. In, He's actually in all the the movie posters of The Last Emperor. So, you know, not only was I bullied as a kid, but my younger brother took 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 the role from me in the movie. <laughs> well, I I love these I love these early these early stories of wanting to get in front of the camera because you are really you are really camera friendly and you're so good. I love your Instagram. I love your the way that you teach. And it's all in Thrive State. So now I want to go back to, 
okay, you're 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 found to have you're found to be very gifted, mm. and you're testing off the charts, and now you have to leave the school you're you're used to. And you're going to this more, I guess, this more affluent school because you're, you're, you're testing off the charts, you're gifted. And they, and, and how did this, how does this come about? Someone contacts your parents and said, Kien's like a little genius and we need to really get him like in a special program. Like, how did this happen? That's basically it. We, we had, you know, I don't know if everybody gets tested, but I think probably one of my teachers in the school in Chinatown uh, had recommended, hey, he seems to be pretty gifted. We should probably test his IQ. And um, so I remember just doing a lot of IQ tests and I tested as highly gifted, which it, you know means your, your IQ is above 135 or something like that. And so- And you're very um, humble. You so don't talk about this. In, in the classroom. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so, so I got bust, bust, bust to that school. Uh, after being tested gifted. So I remember having to, you know, take a bus uh, there. And, you know, when I got there, it was like, wow, you know, these people are not like the people that that I went to my former school with. You know, people had calculators, people had, you know, <laughs> shoes with, with no holes in them, you know? Um, so it was a little bit of a culture shock. Yeah, yeah. And that must have made you feel uh, scared in some ways. Very scared in some ways and also... I, you know, I felt like I had to be something other than myself to be uh, accepted. Yeah. You know, I needed something, you know, I wasn't going to be rich. I wasn't going to somehow, uh, you know, get some pants without any holes in them. I needed to have a bigger personality or I needed to to score very well in that school. I needed something outside of myself uh, to feel accepted. Yeah. You know, and that feeling of not being enough, that actually, you know, if I look back now, that's really the the seed of my early disease, which you know, I'm sure we'll, we'll we'll talk about in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and I I I you know I have the same I had the same feelings as a child. Well. Much different story, but but I was a extremely skinny, extremely skinny. I I didn't like to take my shirt off for shirts and skins. I had a huge fro, big buck teeth. I was very. Um, you know, I thought I was just a real ugly kid and, mm -hmm. uh, and I felt not good enough. I didn't yeah. test off the charts like you, but, it, but, but not good enough was a big theme. Yeah. It was a big yeah. theme. And you're, so you're at the school and you're coming up with strategies. Now you're, you're just a kid. So we, we don't, we don't know what we're doing, but you're coming up with these strategies to, have this amazing personality to be funny to be engaging yeah and it's a way of surviving in many ways yeah. mm -hmm. but it but your early mindset was becoming your mindset and your formulas for living and thriving and thrive state were starting to form we're starting yeah. to form even back then but there was a big there was a big bump in the road so you develop some chronic diseases yeah. And, um, and, and, and so much of chronic disease is, is made worse by stress. You know, I say 100%. stress makes everything worse, right? I mean, you could, you could have a little predisposition predis uh, to uh, diabetes or metabolic syndrome, but then pile some stress on top of it. It, it makes everything mm -hmm. worse. So I want you to tell me how... Yeah. And we're going to go into how you how you transform the entire thing. But now you're this kid. You're you're getting through school. You're in you're 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 now you're in middle school. You're in high school. Take me to the key end of, okay. Now you're sort of getting used to this new school. Your um, where are we now in the whole evolution of Kien Vu, young you know, from young to like middle school, high school. I want to know that key in a little deeper. Before, sure. And, and because now the seeds of like, maybe I, you know, I'm not feeling well or are almost starting to come out. Yeah. So um, the, the, the key in throughout high school, uh, you know, middle school was this guy that actually did very well with this mask. Of, of, of the humorous guy who was able to, to get by, 
you know, score really well, but, but still knows how to have fun. And this was this identity that I built. And I, and, and to me that, that was what I, I felt made me feel like I could belong, but yeah. deep down inside, I didn't really feel that way. I always have to, I, I always had, you know, to uh, create this identity, even, you know, even when, if I didn't feel well, Hey, Ken is, is, is going to be an upbeat guy, no matter what. Ken is going to be yeah. a guy who will tell the jokes and uh, no matter what. And, you know, I always constantly use that guy and, you know, wanted, you know, some outward success um, to kind of drive who I was and what my worth was, you yeah. know, and, and in high school, it was, you know, becoming valedictorian, um, uh, being, you know, president of the key club. Uh, in college, it was starting a new organization. It was also being valedictorian. It was it was, it was uh, speaking, um, you know, in the com com uh, commencement speech. Yeah. You know, and this went on and on and on into medical school, into residency, into attendingship, where I always needed something beyond myself, something on the outside. In fact, when I finally had that MD, you know, that white coat was that thing that I could put on on the outside, and that white coat acted as a mask to the perpetual feeling of not being enough that I've carried throughout my life. Mm. And, you know, that, that energy of not feeling like you belong, like you can't be in your own skin, like, like you're not worthy. Well, that drives a lot of stress. And certainly yeah. that stress then can, can, can lead people, you know, when you're stressed out, you'll, you, you, you tend not to take care for your body. You tend not to sleep well. You might not eat very well. You might not go and, and do the self-care that you need. Um, and so five years in as an interventional radiologist, uh, I bought my dream car. I bought my uh, dream house. Yeah. Uh, I was flying all over the world to, you know, to, to, to give these fancy talks in interventional radiology. Yes. I, was, I was a hotshot. Yeah. But underneath the white coat, I was overweight. I was diabetic. I was hypertensive and I was starting to take uh, prescription medicines for, for the chronic diseases that, mm. that I, that I've actually, what were you chose. on like metformin or something for, yeah. So I was actually, no, I, I hadn't taken metformin then, but I was on, um, I was on uh, early blood, blood pressure medicines. Got it. You know, the, the, uh, the diabetes, once I saw my hemoglobin A1C was above seven, you know, I said, okay, we, we need to turn this around. And yeah. so I, I was able to actually reverse that. So uh, let's, 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 let's take a step back. You're, you are achieving beautiful, wonderful things. Anyone would say, this guy's an all-star, yeah. valid Victorian, beautiful med school, uh, you know, undergrad med school, top of the class, interventional radiology, doing biopsies of very difficult cancer cases, working with medical oncologist, radiation oncologist, you're, you know, you're a cancer specialist, you're getting us the tissue that you're such a vital part of the team. And, and everyone would say this guy's got it all, even though, yeah, he had to, you know, he had to go through these horrible experiences, which no one should have to go through, but you, you, you know, you got through it, right? You, you, you superseded everything. And yet the stress was building up. The stress was building up more and more. So, you know, they, they, you know, all the work you've done, all the, all the, all the amazing things you've gone through and, and all the self examining you've done. No, sometimes the more you achieve, the more you have, the more pressure it puts on you, yeah. the more you have to achieve, then it becomes what's next, what's better. What's the next better thing I can do. When did, when did you, what was the point? What was the, uh, your, your, when the light switch went off, I think, yeah. I think you touched on it, but I want to know what was the light switch that said, maybe there's a different way. Maybe I need to rethink what I've, you know, with this path I'm on, because I was on a very similar path, you know, achieving, I got to be the best, I got to beat all the other oncologists, got to build the best practice. And it nearly killed me. Yeah. What was your light? What was the flick, the flicker that started you down the thrive state path? I know yeah. it was getting the chronic diseases, but there had to be because we can ignore them, right? We tend yeah. to ignore them. Yeah. When yeah. did you go from ignoring them? I'll just work my way through it. This isn't serious to something has to change and I'm going to change with it. I'm going to change the world 
as I change myself. Yeah, well, the, the, the world gifted me with probably the, 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 the shitty, well, sorry, can I say that? Yeah, of course. <laughs> the, the crappiest year of my life. So, you know, it was, around, it was about five years ago, right? So um, just five you know, years ago. Yeah. So wow. All, okay. all, all, all that to say that it was a year where, um, you know, I, I had my diagnoses of high blood pressure, hypertension and all that, and just felt like a fraud being a doctor, um, to, you know, uh, giving people medical advice and having disease myself. Mm. In that same year, I needed shoulder surgery. And I actually wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do interventional radiology anymore. So that gave me some time to think. Mm. Uh, I had a very close uncle pass away from cancer in that year. Oh. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was dating somebody at the time and she was living with me and I thought we were probably going to continue in, onto a long-term relationship, but I was so wrapped up in trying to be successful. I was never really present for her and she left mm. me for another man. Mm. So all those things happened, you know, and in one year, like, in one year. And I said, what the F and I just remember feeling super low, but I remember the, the one turning point moment, because I remember rounding in the hospital this is one it. Day, feeling pretty bad, you know, uh, for myself. Mm -hmm. And, um, then I would, oh, then this I is saw when you, this is when round. you met the guy, this is yeah. when you met the guy. Okay. Go when ahead. I met the guy. Yeah. Yeah. So I was rounding and I, I, I see that my next patient was, was a 43 year old man with terminal pancreatic cancer that mm. I actually had to do a paracentesis for Yep, was removing fluid from, from this guy's belly. Yeah. Fluid and, builds up. It's like a tight as a drum. Yeah, exactly. So it says we're, you know, remove, you know, the, the request was remove 10 liters. And in my mind, I'm thinking, man, I'm having a bad year, but this guy, this guy is not, you know, um, this guy is on his way out. Yeah. And so I expected to, to be met with somebody who was in the, the deepest depths of despair. But I, I walk up, I walk up into his room. I open the door and I walk in this guy's name is Ishmael. And he just looks at me straight in the face with this huge smile and says, doc, how are you, man? And I just remember that moment just being so touched, but you know, and I, I remember I, I get goosebumps right, even right now. But, I, you just, you know, I have them. I just got them. <laughs> yeah. 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 When, From when your he, story, keep going. You know, when, when he said that I was, I just really felt all this love and joy. And I like, and then in, in an instant, I forgot that I had a, a really terrible year. And then I remember asking him, Ishmael, how are you so happy right now? And he said, doc, it didn't always used to be like this. I used to, you know, you know, carry myself with a lot of hate. Uh, but, you know, this cancer has given me a gift and it's given me the understanding that I have a gift of choice. And every moment I choose to live with joy and I choose to conduct myself with joy and happiness and spread that. Mm. And in my mind, I'm like, wow, here's a man who's about to die. And he's really teaching me about the how to live and he's teaching me that yes we do have a choice and it was right after seeing him that i made the choice i made the decision that you know i'm not going to go down this route anymore of being stressed out i need to you know i need to define what life is to me i need to you know i need to reestablish my worth and it took some time you know to kind of do a lot of the deep work but you know part of it was like you know just getting the physical stuff done you know Going through medical school, let's just say, you know, they don't teach you how to be healthy in medical no, school, right? There's no, there's no meditation class. There's, 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 there's none of that. No there, stress reduction, junk even food, junk food in the hospital. Yeah. Um, you know, you're working your 70 to hundred hour, you know, uh, weeks at work. We didn't have uh, those restrictions. Yeah, exactly. You this and was I didn't have that time. This was before those restrictions. So yeah. I remember driving home from late night at residency, stopping at Taco Bell. I remember I mean, exactly what exactly. the heck was I doing? But go on. I want to hear more about you. Go so, ahead. so so that's it. Right. I mean, in, and in fact, so many of my colleagues, you know, uh, live this very same lifestyle. And in fact, it's that lifestyle that turns on the genes that that turns on all the things that you might maybe have a predisposition for. Um, and certainly my, my, both my grandparents had diabetes, which is no surprise. I was diabetic when, when I turned those things on, but here's the, here's the good news. Epigenetics. You know, yep. Epigenetics. Epigenetics means that we actually have a choice that the choices that we make and the actions that we take actually controls gen, uh, genetic expression, not, 
not just the genes that, that were dealt with. And as I started to make new choices um, about how I ate, how I slept, how I thought, as I started to become more aware of the emotions that I was feeling in, in, in myself, and if they were negative, how then can I shift those things? Then yeah, I started yeah. to change the gene. Then I started to change the energy in my body. And that's what you know, Thrive State's all about. It talks about basically what is the what are the things that tells a cell to either thrive where we have peak performance, longevity, and optimal health? And what makes a cell decides, hey, we're going to go in the other direction. And it turns out that everything, whether it be food, thoughts, emotion, everything is actually energy that talks to our cells and DNA in a moment-to-moment -moment basis. Mm -hmm. and, it, and as I became more aware of those things and every day started to make some new choices, I was able to shift that energy and then tell, tell myself, hey, now it's time to thrive and let's get out of that stress state. Because yeah. in that stress state, what happens? You have increased inflammation, you have decreased immunity that puts you prone to getting chronic disease. And in fact, you know, so many people are not dealing well with COVID-19 here in America only because we are so chronically sick. We have so, such a low bioenergetic state. Yes, and you talk about yeah. your the, the Kien Vu bioenergetic model, which yeah. we're gonna get into, but I wanna go back again I don't want to skip over anything because your story is so inspirational and I just love you so much. You're like a brother. Yeah. I want to go back. So do you believe that, that your cell is, your cells are listening to every thought you have? 100%. You believe that? You believe 100%. Yeah. Because every, see, well, so it's psycho neuroimmunology, psycho neuroimmunology. Is there that, we go. is exactly. that, am I, am I, get, am I in the right direction? You're exactly in the right direction because we are the only species on this planet pretty much that could think in negative thought. And here's the thing. If you focus on that thought, if, if you let that, if, if, if you, if you allow that thought to kind of like be something that you are actually ruminating on, you could turn that negative thought and it will produce a negative emotion. And those negative emotions of fear, of anger, of resentment, of hate, all that actually drives your stress response. So norepinephrine, cortisol goes up. All the inflammatory um, uh, 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 markers like IL-1, IL-6, TNF-alpha, they go up. Mm. Immunity goes down. Yeah. And all, all those negative emotions actually put you prone and sets you up to get chronic disease. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yes, we, you know, our cells are constantly listening to every moment. So the thing is, if you're thinking life sucks, your cells are like, oh, life sucks and I'm stressed. So, you know, yeah. give yourselves that environment. You, we can through our conscious choices. And I'm not saying it's easy because we have, you know, a lot of past traumas that we need to heal as well yes. um, to get to the point where we're like, oh, okay, that's an old thought, an old belief. Yeah. What then do I want to replace it with? And yeah. it, as we start to you know, practice inserting these new, more empowering thoughts and beliefs into our body, our cells are listening to that as well. Yeah, there's, a, there's, there's so many uh, experts out there talking about uh, past trauma, right? Yeah. And how to heal past trauma. And, and you had a lot of trauma. You went through a lot of trauma. And um, so if our cells are listening to every thought we have, you know, I want to go back like, okay, I want to go back to when you and I, when we were sort of in the thick of it, yeah. in the thick of not feeling well, because that, that's a whole other ball game. We can, we're both on the other side of it. You're yeah. writing books about it. You're helping people who are right in the thick of it. So I want us to go back to someone who's listening to this right now is in the middle of it. And it feels like there's no hope. It feels like it's always going to be this way. It feels like there's nothing I can do to get out of this. And, and it can feel really hopeless and scary. And, and, and I just think there's too many, there's too much. Oh, you'll get over it. I want, I want the expert, I want Kien Vu, MD, author of Thrive State, to speak to someone right now who's out there in the thick of it, yeah. who's in that, in the, the, they're having the worst year of their life. They just, in the middle of a pandemic, maybe a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, but they feel horrible. They don't feel hope. Uh, 
they're not feeling well, their, their numbers are off the charts in a bad way. What can we do mm -hmm. to just start this process? I want everyone to get the book. I want you to go to thrivestatebook.com right now and order the book because this is your blueprint. But before the book arrives, I want you to hear from the author. How do we take the first little step? It's got to be a tiny step, like BJ yeah. Fogg says, right? What's a couple tiny little things we can do right now from the expert to just to take the virtue, the vicious cycle and mm -hmm. start to just stop it spinning so fast so we can eventually get it going to the other way, the virtuous cycle? Yeah, great question. I so know it's, it's, it's almost impossible to answer. I'm putting you on the spot, but just let's, let's take it from someone's having the worst week of their life. What mm -hmm. can we do? What can we say to that person? Well, one, know that there's many people who have been there and, and recognize that I've been in there in that, that depth too. of despair and yeah. know you're not alone. So, you know, getting, getting some help and, and, and understanding that you could talk about this vulnerably to people like you and I or, or listening to people like you and I are, are very helpful. Here's the other thing. And just recognize that you might not be able to see the pattern yet. You, you, you know, but I, I, I implore everybody where if you're starting to feel stuck, it's just a pattern that's there, that that's not actually you. And there's a way outside of it. And you, if you could start to think of your thoughts as separate and you're like, oh, you know what? I'm playing out a pattern that I've got, you know, from, 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 from you know, as, you know, as a child, a brain you're pattern. Like, a brain pattern. That's yeah. all it is, is just a pattern. If you can recognize that and, and you start to become a little bit more aware, of, oh, okay, that's a pattern. That's why I act the way it is. If you can start to separate yourself yes. from that pattern, then you say, oh, I have a new choice. So that's not an easy process, but- the, So the uh, first step is almost recognizing that that's a pattern. That's the hugest thing. Once you recognize the that noticing. that's noticing. You are not your disease. You, you're the one having the thought of the disease or I'm stuck or I will never get it better or I'm, I'm no good. I'm not good enough to make this change. If you can, st the, so the first step is noticing, noticing that those are my predominant patterns. Exactly. It's a pattern and it's not you. Who, who is the you? Who is the you? Is the person actually that's observing those thoughts and now gets to choose beyond that. And so what do you then do next? I mean, if you read my book, we'll, we'll talk about those seven um, bioenergetic elements that, that are pretty much the, the most crucial things your cells are listening to on a day-to-day -day basis, which is sleep, nutrition, movement, stress, and emotional mastery, our thoughts, relationships, and purpose. All this is energy. Mm -hmm. And I give strategies with each one. So the thing is, as you're looking through the book, you pick the easiest thing. What is going to be the low lying fruit for you because all these things are energetically connected yep. your physical emotional mental and spiritual self all these are emotionally you know are energetically connected so as you start to improve on one thing everything else starts to get better for me it was just like let's just get the physical stuff down let's just sleep better eat better and do those things yeah and you'll, you'll start to notice oh okay i'm starting to feel better oh now i got more energy to exercise and it's a virtuous cycle that makes everything and all the other actions easier so one is having the awareness and then and next having the you know after that is choosing the very low-lying fruit you know a very simple action a simple promise that tiny habit that that you want to develop yeah. Um, and then you just slowly add on to that little by little by little. What was finish. your what was your first low hanging fruit tiny habit when you were at your lowest that started your way out of it? I know you said the physical stuff. Yeah. But did you say I'm going to cut out sugar? Did you say I'm going oh, to start exercising? Uh, you know, I'm giving I'm giving away th things from the book. But but um, I what was it for you? What, what was your, the littlest thing, the low hanging fruit that you made that choice, that you made that change? Yeah, for me, it was, it was the sugar and the processed foods. I was like, I, I am just, you know, my days at the hospital before were starting up with a couple, only because I was so exhausted. 
you know, a cup of coffee in the morning with like six or seven pumps of international delight, followed by multiple, uh, you know, monster and, and Red Bulls throughout the day. Wow. So and then I never got then into Red Bull. Friend. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so it was just getting getting rid of all of that. You know so what I would do? Yeah. I would get woken up. You know how we get woken up at three, four in the morning. I would go to the nurse's station and find an Ensure Plus. Yeah. Oh. I would chug it. And it's just sugar. I mean, yeah. it's, it's high fructose. So I was I was drinking Ensures. Um, so, OK, but it's not easy to eliminate sugar. Yeah, it's not so easy. So there's there's different, you know, there's different ways of doing Our it. Our friends I, talk I, about substituting, right? Taking yeah. one thing, substituting. Uh, um, sugar for stevia or or making those little swaps. JJ Virgin talks about ta taking the pasta out and making cauliflower rice, you know, like mm -hmm. little, those little swaps. But mm -hmm. th again, easier said than done. Mm -hmm. Not everyone can afford shopping at Whole Foods. So how can how how does what's an easy way or a tiny habits way to cut back on sugar? I, yes. I know it's hard. I mean, we, we can't ask people to to go all in. I, mm -hmm. I know I want to. I want to say cold turkey, no more sugar. But what's the realistic chance of that? Let's be real with people. Yeah, I'm going to say, like, stop sugar, of course. But what are they? But what's someone going to do who's really listening to this right now? Are they going to go, OK? No more sugar. Or can we say, like, instead of eating a Snickers, maybe get a Quest bar? Like, how do we? I know Great it's question. hard. It's hard. Yeah. So you could do a modified cold turkey just by kind of reducing the the amount. Like you say, say, say you I, I did five pumps. Let me do four pumps this week and let me do that for a week or two. Then bring that down to three, you know, and then substitute almost like the flossing one tooth. Yeah. Is that what you're exactly. saying? Mm -hmm. Flossing, yeah. Or like I tell my smoking patients with lung cancer, can you try and just smoke one less cigarette than yesterday? Exactly. Exactly. So one less pump of the international stuff. Yeah. One less. Okay. That is, that really is taking it like, well, if I, if I want to start flossing, I'll start with flossing one tooth. Right. Exactly. So here, here's the other thing, like, and, and I, I, I use this technique and almost everything, you know, whether it be, you know, trying to adjust my thoughts, but any, any habit I do, there's, there's a, there's a quote by Viktor Frankl. And he says, between stimulus and response, there's a space. And in that space is our power to choose our response. And in our response lies our freedom and growth. And so if I'm craving sugar, for example, all I need to do is like, Hey, there's a trigger. Now, if you don't, immediately respond by I just need to devour sugar and you give yourself some space and what's one thing you can do is uh, is take 10 deep breaths in through your nose out through your mouth and what that'll do is just create a little bit of space so you'll recognize almost immediately that that craving is gone right um can people and then, do that right now who are listening yeah take them you through can do that let's do it right now let's, let's like, do it right now okay let's so, do it right now take them through just a little bit of that break so they can do it right now and after the podcast too. take yeah. it through it. Okay, so here's the process. You create space, 10 deep breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Now, as you're doing this, I want you to think of the acronym ACT, which stands for awareness, choice, and take action. So one, have the awareness. Oh, okay, there's that craving again. All right, okay, that's there. Am I noticing, is it getting stronger? Is it getting less? Or there's that I'm not enough thought again, whatever that might be, have that awareness that it's there. Don't judge it. Don't hate yourself for having it there. Those thoughts aren't, aren't going to, uh, aren't going to necessarily go away. You're just not going to let them have that power over you. So have that awareness, C choice. Once you have that awareness, Oh, okay. There's that craving again. Hmm, no, I don't want to do it. I don't, I don't want to eat sugar. What do I want to choose instead? What do I want to, what, what do I would rather do right now? I, I don't want that. All right. Is it exercise? Is it doing some push-ups or whatever it might be? Choose. Or, you know, if you have a negative thought or intention, how do I want to feel right now? There's that negative thought there. I don't want, I don't want to give it any power. I still want to show up with a joy and gratitude. So see, choose and have that intention. And then finally, when you're there, take action, take that new action 
of that basically the you know choose it from the person you want to be choose from that place and take that new action and every time you do that and then finally like dj fog says as you complete that celebrate whatever you decide to do you you know you decided to do 10 push-ups instead of grabbing some sugar celebrate that because what that'll do is it'll lock in that new habit so anytime you've got a nasty thought that you want to take yourself out of anytime you've got a craving that's kind of coming just go through that process create space and act mm. i love it it's it's and tell everyone who victor frankel was who, who said that amazing quote i mean yeah this victor frankel i mean he is a uh, a psychologist neurologist or something like that but he was you yeah, know he yeah. was in basically um the uh you know he was you know a, a survivor of the holocaust yeah. and he has seen and witnessed you know so many of his family members die and just so much torture and how does somebody like that you know you know leave that space with so much joys with so much gratitude he was able he was able to master his mind because he was able to take the time to create that space and from that space he always chose a version of himself that was just more powerful than any circumstance outside yeah his that man's search for meaning is just it's always on the top books list uh, everywhere you look because it, you're in a you're in a death camp and you found a way to survive it yeah if he could do that we could replace just you know just starting to replace that sugar you know eat, instead of eating that handful of of you know chocolate or whatever it is unhealthy chocolate replacing it with a couple push-ups and it could yeah. be knee, it could be knee push-ups right it could be it could be a couple uh, it could be walking up and down the stairs yeah Something I replace simple. most of those things. I drink a lot of sparkling water. You yeah, know? I love uh, that stuff. I, I love I, that stuff. I, I've replaced alcohol with it. I've replaced sugar with it, you know, um, and uh, yeah, I, I enjoy it. This, this, this gives me a little bit of fizzy. So it, it, it gives me a different type of a hit. Yeah. And, uh, and so this has been a great, uh, a great tool for me, sparkling water. Okay. So now you've, you've started down this path. You've started down this path. You've recognized, you've, you've faced it, you've embraced it, and now you're starting to replace it. Yeah. And you're FRCing it. You're, you're face, replace, and um, you're, you're doing, you're, you're starting on the new actions. Okay, so how long does it take for you to start feeling better? And how does that translate into, okay, I, I, I'm turning this stuff around. I want to get this message out to, a larger audience like now you're the you're back to the kid who's got the incredible personality yeah. and now i'm going to start changing changing the world and making incredible videos and making people laugh and smile and doing edutainment and you're one of the best at that um how does it turn how does it go from i'm turning around this high blood pressure the high a1c the pre-diabetes to wait i want to i want to bring this to a larger audience. How does that come about? Take me to yeah. that origin story, the next phase of Kien Vu. I'm going to, I'm going to go to anti-aging conferences and be the world's expert in this and that and anti-aging. And how does, okay, how does that come from interventional radiology to now Thrive State author? I mean, it's a long story, but it's worth it because there's so many people out there who want to make a difference for others. Yeah. You've done it. You're doing it. You're a master at it. How did it go from my experience to now changing other people? Right. Helping them change. You can't change anyone. You're helping them see it for themselves. Yeah. So after I was able to reverse all those chronic conditions in, in a matter of four to six months, whoa, uh, I said, you know, and, and, then get, and then got rid of all my prescription medications. I said, all of them, yeah, all of them. I said to myself, this, this is something very special because chronic disease is actually probably the biggest, you know, problem we have in healthcare, not only in America, but around the world who is adopting American lifestyle, right? Yeah. This is the problem. We're ruining every country who's like, oh yeah, Mc I want McDonald's. Like, <laughs> right. you know, what country was that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's just but, so generic. You know, but understanding that 
I can do that. And, and, and here's the other thing too, was, you know, I did that with, you know, really going deep on epigenetics and there was just so much in the anti-aging and regenerative medicine world that, that really excited me. Were you taking notes on your own changes? Exactly. I was notes on my own changes and, and I was applying it. And so the thing was not only did I reverse my disease, but I was smarter. I had more energy. I was stronger. But you're already valid Victorian. <laughs> right. What, so what you're saying, you, you're oh. thinking, your thinking was faster. You were able to, you weren't, exactly. slot, you didn't have the fog, the brain fog. Exactly. So I, I, I felt like as I did that, I became basically the superhero version of myself. Mm. And I said this, like, if I can do this, you know, with a lot of lifestyle stuff, if, if I, if I did this on my own, if I can just let other people know my story so that they could understand as well, I really want to be able to reverse this chronic disease statistic. And not just so that people, you know, I think a world without chronic disease would be awesome, but as they, if they go through the same journey, which I'm pretty sure people will do is as they reverse that, they, they just recognize their own power to tackle anything else in life. Mm -hmm. And they become the superhero versions of themselves. And I just imagine the world, what if everybody, what if we were a globe of Avengers and everybody <laughs> was there just to share their gifts, right? Yeah. You know, Eisenberg and, mm -hmm. and Boo would, would have their, 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 their health comedy show <laughs> on TV, you know, uh, sharing their gifts that's what I envisioned. And so when I was able to do that for myself, I said, wow, you know, we what? are doing that, by the way, but keep going. Yeah, you're right. That 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 inclination to want to do media and speaking I had as a child, mm. that was really there. But it was really having the gift of my struggle, having the, the gift of racism, having the gift mm. of my disease, reversing all that and understanding that. That puts me in the position now to, and then, you know, having gone through the traditional medical route to be able to now say, I've had all these tools. I've been through this. Now's my time to actually have the message that I can legitimately share to people as to how owning the power of your health can really put you in the position to, to really thrive in life. Mm. And, and take me through the decision to go from just straight IR to now doing concierge, high performance, anti-aging, technology meets the best of nature and, and humanity. Uh, when did you make that leap of faith? Because it's hard, right? Your, your, your bread and butter is, do, is interventional radiology, do, getting biopsies and high tech. When did you decide to, I'm gonna combine high tech with high touch? and right. do it in a cutting edge, beautiful way with heart. Um, so that part wasn't easy because I mean, I was so used to achieving success from this out, outward thing. And, you know, I, I, you know, I built up, you know, uh, you know, it took what, 16 years of training <laughs> to get uh, interventional radiology and yeah. to, to jump off. So I, I did it gradually. In fact, I still teach at UCLA and I do a couple of days there. You're listening um, to a professor, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and when I talked to one of my patients, uh, he, he told me something that resonated. Um, but he says, you know, when you're doing interventional radiology, you're, you are, you're basically, you know, kind of, um, you know, uh, kind of prolonging life. When you're doing the work that you're doing now, you're really giving life. Mm. And mm. that really stuck with me. And so that's, what, that's really what, what fuels me. Uh, to do what I do. So, you know, I'm really fortunate to be able to work with um, a lot of high profile clients right now. But really, you know, the, the message of the book, the message that I put out in my social media, it's so that you don't necessarily have to work with the doctor, just really understand the power that you have, that you are your best medicine. That's really the, the message that, that I want to share. I love that message. I love that message. And I think that's the title of your second book by the way. Um, and you will have many books. Um, so now, okay, you're, you're, take me through someone walks into your office, your, your, your concierge medicine office. What, what do you say to them? What's, what's your first way of assessing somebody? They come in. I, I want to, I want to go from where I am to optimal Avenger me. 
what's the first step? You have to take a detailed history of everything they've they're doing, how much sugar they're eating, mental. I mean, you're doing men, you're doing mind, body, soul, aren't you? Right. So this this is a complete. I go. I basically take them through my book. Right. Yeah. I book, yeah. I do a bioenergetic assessment of them, which is taking them and looking at you know, what are their habits in this most seven important areas? Again, what are they? Sleep, nutrition, movement, stress and emotional mastery, relationships, thoughts, and purpose. Where are you, where are they in that, in those seven categories? And it's coaching them through that. And then, you know, taking a detailed assessment, uh, you know, with, with, with laboratory values as well, you know, doing a pretty comprehensive lab to kind of look at their hormone levels, take a look at their micronutrient levels and things like that and to see what where we can we can um we can start to adjust but you'll start to notice that once 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 those seven things in the bioenergetic model gets addressed their numbers start looking really good very quickly now and now someone in iowa can get your book thrivestatebook.com and amazon.com thrive thrive state kian vu but they could also then zoom with you couldn't they do a zoom consultation i mean this is one of the one of the things that are now uh it's come out of this horror is someone could do a a a zoom consultation with you anywhere in the world couldn't they and go over the book and and maybe they could get blood work locally and you could review it even that's what we're doing now so i mean I, i i was expecting to start a brick and mortar uh at the start of the pandemic but again that was a gift that allowed me some time to to spend uh, more with my family. And then I opened up my telemedicine practice. And how do people reach you at the telemedicine practice? KienVuMD.com? Yeah, they can go to my website, KienVu.com actually. Two U's, V V O O Kien K-I-E-N-V-O-V-U-U.MD.com. There you go. That was, that was not good spelling. Um, <laughs> But this, we're not over. I just want people to be able to know where to reach you. Um, I want to know how you met your beautiful wife. Um, if you're not familiar with Kien's Instagram, it's Kien Vu MD. His, his Instagram's just beautiful. And he's been featuring his, his wife and his new baby and his, his stepdaughter. And they're just beautiful. I just want to know, how did you all meet? Um, we're going to get personal here, if that's okay with you. Yeah. The Dr. Stephen show does not have any boundaries, uh, unfortunately, for you. Um, how did you meet? <laughs> how did you guys meet? And I want to know about oh. the, the dating and the wedding, because you, you got married not that long ago. Actually, I'm not married yet. Uh, oh my god i'm sorry i thought i saw a marriage i oh no i saw the wing i saw the engagement i'm sorry yeah i saw the proposal on on insta i'm sorry go ahead yeah tell me about the the meeting and the in dating into the engagement take me there yeah so uh well i mean in, in, in wanting to become a better version of myself uh i was at a date with destiny uh tony robbins event uh back in 2018 yeah. And, um, you know, uh, I, I really wanted, you know, to go deep into my own transformation. And he has a program that costs a buttload of money, <laughs> like six figures worth of money. I've heard. And, uh, and I signed up and I, you know, I sold my house in order to do that. So I sold that's that big commitment. Uh, to what do, do they that. say? Burn the ships behind you yeah. and there's no turning back. There you go. You there really, you, go. Ha- you really had to go for it. Right. So, and uh, the, my very first event uh, after that was a UPW in Dallas. Uh, and we actually met. What's at the that? UPW. Unleash the power with. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so we actually met um, in Dallas uh, right after that event. She and was in the event. She was in the event. She was in the event and I sort of recognize her hair. You, you know, she's a, she's a celebrity uh, hair and makeup and beauty artist. Yeah. Uh, so she had some really funky hair. I said, were you just at the event? <laughs> and, uh, and the rest is history. That's a beautiful man. That's beautiful. Oh my God. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, so Thrive State. Yeah, Thrive, Thrive State. State. Thrive State is, you know, I, it's my... It, it's my life's work up, up until now, but yeah. You know, and you know, I, there, there was, 
there was some uncertainty, like, oh, does this model really work? But yeah. you know, right now I've been working with, you know, uh, some corporate CEOs. I've worked with some Hollywood celebs. I put them through this program and they're just getting real great results. And I don't want to say it's my program because it's really, you know, I've, I've taken stuff from epigenetics. I've taken stuff from my own life and I just apply this and I apply this with love with the people I work with. And so um, I know that the information there is very, very valuable. And I know that anybody who wants to really show up as the very best versions of themselves, if they want to live a long time and basically have, have the vitality uh, to carry out their purpose, this book is for them. Beautiful. Yeah, the books, the book is really about loving yourself, isn't it? Yeah, yes, it is. In it's a world a that's authenticity, there's mm -hmm. being the authentic you, mind, body, and soul. There's there's a lot of hate in the world right now, and you're all about love. I want to know how you personally healed some of the trauma, if you're willing to share. How did you go back and uh, because it's not easy to go back and say, you know, I'm holding on to this fear you know we oprah always says choose love over fear in every moment yeah. how did you how did you heal some of there's so much hate in the world right now what would you say to someone who's experiencing that hate in their lives or or how would they first start to heal some of that trauma yeah i just can't stand the hate that's that's going around right now well great question um one i believe you know was it Gandhi who said this? Be the change you want to see in the world. And I think that's so important. Because um, here's the other thing, too. I mean, there is a lot of hate. And just recognize that that concept, that virus has been around for centuries and centuries. Yeah. So it gets, it gets picked up. So anybody who's feeling stressed out, you know, it's been around, you know, and our amygdala turns, turns it on that there's this us versus them situation. Um and just to recognize that hurt people hurt people. So the ones that mm. are inflicting pain right now, they've got a lot of insecurity and fear that's going on inside of them as well. And I think, you know, if we want to be that change, you know, if we're getting, if we're, if we're getting number one, all the violence needs to stop and we need to put in, you know, things in place where that does, doesn't happen, but then how do we act? You know, um, I think we, choose to respond rather than to react if there's hate going on right now just go okay well hurt people hurt people if i can understand that mm -hmm. i want a world full of love i want a world where you know children of different colors play with each other and that you know we are all superheroes bringing each other forward i want that world if that's the case even even if somebody is is, is spitting out you know uh words at me that that may be hurtful how do i respond I can still respond with love. I can mm. still respond with compassion. And it's really being that change that you want to see. I love that. I love that. And it, and it is taking that, that Victor Frankl pause, isn't it? Yep. As well. Like it's, I said, I apply that to everything is, is taking that pause and asking yourself, all right, is this an old pro you know, program going on right now? Or um, how then do I want to choose? And it's really making that conscious choice. Mm. What did you eat today? What did I eat today? Yeah, what did you uh, eat today? So far, I'm intermittent fasting. So, so far, this is all I got. I'll be eating uh, uh, one meal a little bit later. What and you, um, yeah. we got to finish up pretty soon because I've got an appointment. Oh, today. that's right. That's right. That's right. Right. Um, Self-care. Self-care is important. Self-care Self uh, is important. I'm going to, we're going to wrap up in a minute, but I want everyone to, Go to Thrive State Book, search for Thrive State anywhere you buy books. Um, it's really exciting. And I, and I want to say also that I think when you read Thrive State, you start to feel better in your own skin. You start to have this mindset that, you know, I'm, I'm capable. I'm capable of loving myself. I'm cap and when you start to love yourself, maybe there is, you'll, you, you won't, you'll be looking for love in all the right places instead of looking for hate, you know, you'll when start, you start being that change. Better, exactly. Well, here's the other thing I talk about in, in the book is energetically, as you start to feel better, where, wherever you're at, you're, you broadcast the frequency. So when you start to feel better, you bring more better things that are in. So as your body starts to become better, you start, you're going to think better and you're going to start to feel better. 
So yeah, I agree with that. And I, I feel better just being uh, with you for the last, however we've been on. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, look out, uh, contact Kian and all his social channels, Kian Vu MD on Instagram. He's huge. I love him. Thanks for being here. Get his book, Thrive State. It's a game changer, a life changer, a love changer. And um, love you, brother. And thank you for being here. And any last word, uh, you, you've got one billboard and you've got five words that you can put on the billboard. What are you going to put up there? Easy. Be, yeah. You know what it is. You are your best medicine. <laughs> you are your best medicine, everybody. And thanks again, Kian, for being here. You are your best medicine. And I uh, love you. And thank you, buddy. Thank you for having me. There's a doctor named Steven Eisenberg down San Diego way. He's got a didgeridoo and man, you just gotta hear him play. When his people come in for chemo, he knows they'll be upset. He picks up that didgeridoo and plays music they can't forget. Dr. Steven. Dr. Steven Eisenberg, Dr. Steven, woo, Dr. Steven Eisenberg, Dr. Steven, Dr. Steven Eisenberg.